Sponsored by Brilliant. This time last year, we had new, incredibly powerful iPad Pro hardware, but what we didn't have was the iOS software to truly unlock all of its potential. iOS 12 had been, in large part, a performance and stability release, and I loved that. Loved it so much, I'm gonna repeat the need to repeat it every year, basically ad nauseum infinitum until it happens. But we were missing things, especially things that would let the iPad be the iPad. I've been asking for an iPad OS for like five years, something that would keep the iOS underpinnings, but let the experience be unique, the way the watch and TV had been basically unique since launch. And just when I'd all but given up hope, Apple gave it to us, iPad OS, along with many of the features many of us had been asking for since Steve had first sat down in that big comfy chair. Most of the features, but not all of them, and not all the way. Just the other day I made a video about the return to focus on reliability and performance enhancements, and a few new features I'd love to see in iOS 14 for the iPhone. Now I'm gonna roll right into the iPad with features I'd love to see in iPad OS 14. I'm Renee Ritchie, and this is Vector. In my re-review for the 2018 iPad Pro, I listed six things that I thought it needed to get in order to become a viable laptop alternative to most people most of the time. I wanted the ability to plug in an SD card, an SSD drive, any type of storage and just Dyson down the files, but also the ability to plug in any USB-C accessory and have it just work. I wanted some form of trackpad support so I wouldn't have to take my hands off the keyboard just to navigate while typing. I wanted real websites, not the iPhone versions blown up to iPad size. I wanted the ability to handle multiple audio streams so I could podcast from the iPad and not always have to go running back to my Mac. And I wanted some form of real but not full Xcode so developers could build iPad apps, you know, on the iPad. Lastly, I wanted a guest mode so I could give my iPad to a colleague, even a kid, and not have to worry about giving them all my data at the same time. And iPadOS gave us some of that. The Files app is still missing some features, not to make it more Finder-like, but just to make it more functional, like a progress bar. I don't care if it's a lie, I'm human. I need exactly that kind of lie. Mouse and trackpad support is currently an offshoot of assistive touch and not yet a full-on pointer system. Desktop Safari has been really great for me, but there's still nothing in terms of multiple audio support though, or Xcode, or Guestboard. Like I said in my iOS 14 wishlist video earlier this week, iOS 13 was so jam-packed that it ended up being one of the most problematic releases from Apple in recent memory. So I definitely love it if Apple would go back and iOS 12 style, give their best and brightest half the year to make every release just what it always should be, delightful. But me being me, I still have a wish list, a restrained list given what I just said, but with some wishes on it nonetheless. Apple has this way of just flat out trolling us, like how we all wanted night mode on the iPhone, but they gave us night mode on the watch, then on the Apple TV, then on the Mac, basically everything but the iPhone until last year when we hashtag finally got it for all of iOS, including the new iPad OS. Multi-user on the iPad, the ability to switch between different accounts, environments, and preferences has been similar. The Mac has had multi-user basically forever. Apple teased a fairly slick version of it for the iPad, but only for education managed devices. Then, last year, the Apple TV got multi-account support, if not full-on multi-user. Phones are hyper-personal, so there's no real pressure for multi-user on them. I get it. TVs are generally family devices, if you have a family, so it makes sense there. iPads exist in some quantum cat box state in between. Very personal for some people, very shared for other families, even businesses. And right now, iPadOS only serves the former and does nothing to help the latter. In a perfect world, the iPad would just recognize your fingerprint or your face ID and let you into your account. And then you wouldn't have to worry about your parents seeing your text messages, your kids deleting your game data, everyone's music picks polluting everyone else's music recs, or Bob on the day shift just leaving those gross memes on the browser. Because damn it, Bob, you've been to HR. Apple has done a pretty good job building out family features. They could always be smoother, easier, better, sure. But one part that still stands out as needing some serious love is photo and video sharing. We've had photo streams in the past. We have iCloud photo sharing now. You can even like and comment, so social. But proper shared library could be even cooler. 
When you set up your family, you get an extra tab in the Photos app called Family. And then anyone in the family can share any album or individual photo or video into it, with all the same manual and smart organizational features as the main individual library enjoys. Take a photo, shoot a video, tap and hold, share with family, done. Find an album, tap, hold, share with family, done. And maybe make device backups free in terms of iCloud storage. That way everyone has just a little bit of extra room for those family photos. A decade later and the iPad is still missing several of the apps that come with the iPhone by default. Urban legend holds that Steve Jobs just didn't like the way weather or calculator widgets looked on the big iPad screen. But that was then, this is now, and scads of indie developers have shown just how great those types of apps can look on the iPad. Apple's HI, human interface team, could no doubt knock them out of the Apple Park as well. And since consistency is a customer facing feature, they really, really, truly, sincerely should. Beyond those though, the apps I would really love to see on iPad are health, activity, and watch. The iPhone is great for entering, collecting, and triaging data on the go. The Mac is terrific for editing and processing tons of data when you have the time. But the iPad sits in between, quick enough to ingest on the go, but big enough to aggregate and report when you have time to stop. Just the idea of sitting back and going through all the health graphs and activity trends on that glorious iPad screen makes me want those apps on that screen yesterday. Watch is the big one though. One day the watch will be fully independent from the iPhone, like the iPhone is now from the Mac and PC. But until then, and even then, being able to see and manage everything relating to the Apple Watch on the big iPad display, including and especially watch faces, would be phenomenal. And for people who don't have an iPhone but do have an iPad, it would be transformative. I'm going to use the term Siri now as the name for something because Apple uses it for shortcuts. But what I mean by Siri in this context is that combination of machine learned smarts and automations both preset and suggested. Siri shortcuts by itself is terrific and I very much hope the very first building blocks towards a voice enabled opportunistic programming if not operating system. Yes, like Tony Stark and Jarvis. But where it gets even more interesting is when they're no longer a discrete thing and just part of the system in general. For example, it's long been rumored that Apple's working on a next generation mail app that's a lot more artificially intelligent, which is frankly exactly what it needs to be. So imagine there could be a construct that allowed for stripped down, sped up Siri shortcuts like functionality to exist at the system level inside every app. It would be a game changer. There's just so much sorting, so much batch tasks. You've never opened any of these emails. Do you want to unsubscribe? Do you want to archive or delete all similar messages? You've searched for this three times now. Should I create a smart mailbox for you? I've created mail groups based on your six most frequent interactions. You've opened this email three times today. I'm going to pin it for you for the next 48 hours. You snoozed this email last week. Do you want to reply to your mother or should I accidentally delete it for you? There are a bunch of apps where this kind of functionality would be terrific, of course, and between apps. But there's also enough specificity needed that I'd love to see it built out carefully, step by step on an app by app basis. So our assistants can become closer to, you know, being actual assistants. And if you want to help get us there, check out Brilliant, specifically the new Algorithms Fundamental course. Start with simple drag and drop exercises to get you thinking like a computer scientist about how algorithms are structured. Learn big O, conditionals, loops, arrays, and how to put them all together into common algorithms for searching and sorting. Brilliant is a problem solving based website and app with a hands on approach with over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. It puzzles you, surprises you, and expands your understanding of the modern world. And all of Brilliant's courses have storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges, and problems to solve. The best resolution you can make for yourself this year is investing in your STEM skills. So go to brilliant.org slash vector and finish your day a little smarter every day. Thanks Brilliant and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. Sure, there's a ton of other stuff I'd love to see in both iOS and iPadOS eventually. But again, what I'd love even more is for Apple to take their time and make sure each piece is rock solid before rolling out the next piece, especially as we continue to transition from its next step roots to what really comes next. So hit like if you do, subscribe and share and ring that bell gizmo so YouTube will actually tell you, you know, when new videos go live, then hit up the comments and let me know. What do you want to see in iPadOS 14 this June? Thanks for watching. See you next video.